Hello, welcome to Curl Up with Cathy Bramley. I've got a wonderful guest for you today. Um, it's somebody that I've uh, met lots of times. She's become a friend over the years. We've been on writing retreats together. We speak when we need help with our plots. Um, and uh, yeah, and we've, uh, we've become firm friends and read each other's books. So um, I'm delighted to introduce Alex Brown. Hello, Alex, and welcome to Curl Up with Cathy Bramley. Hello. Hello. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? I'm very, oh, what's that? Well, I've got a little cheeky Prosecco for the afternoon. I'm Good just going to myself one while we I have a little chat. What, I tell you what, I'm doing Cheers. something wrong. Cheers. I haven't even got a glass of water. Oh, feel very left out. Is it, Where are you sitting, Alex? Whereabouts in your house are you? Um, I'm in my writing room or my office and... Um, my husband's just put a picture up on the wall, so you've got oh. something to look at other than yeah. a blank white wall. <laughs> oh, he is good. He is he good, is yes. good. Yeah, he he's a bit good. of a technical whiz as well, isn't he? Your husband. He is, he's, yes. There's lots of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's what you need. That's what you need, especially when you're working. Does he work as her, at home as well? or? Uh, no, he works abroad most of the time from um, Tuesday to Thursday. He works in various different countries. But obviously since um, the you coronavirus hit, mm -hmm. he's, he's been working from home full time. So he works mm -hmm. from, from home sometimes, um, so normally on a Friday. And uh, But no, he's at home all the time now. So, mm -hmm. uh, And do you, manage to, do you manage to sort of keep a good working sort of space because obviously it's quite difficult when we're all on top of each other so to speak because it's lots of people won't be used to that but um do you manage to keep up a, a work routine we do yes yeah we've got pretty good at being quite strict um with ourselves and being motivated so we do sometimes take an afternoon off and go to the cinema or have a little lunch but um he's got an office across the landing from my office so it's um there's a bit of distance between us but, uh, but he's been ever so good since the lockdown started. He's actually set up his office in our kitchen on the breakfast bar because obviously my daughter's at home. And um, so she's doing her homeschooling at the, the kitchen table and uh, he's at the other end of the kitchen <laughs> keeping an eye on her. Uh, yeah oh bless so that's that I good. can do some writing yeah. upstairs. So. Yeah oh that's useful yeah well obviously my girls are that bit older so um, you know they, they very much keep themselves occupied these days and do their own thing. Isabel's been painting, doing a lot of painting. And Phoebe's Phoebe's got university work to do. So they they all keep themselves separate. And uh, so it's quite good. I'm quite lucky that I haven't got to do all that homeschooling business. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you've got your lovely tree house as well. To got the tree house. Yeah, got the tree house, which um, is been is proved a, such a bonus actually doing these recordings because um, there's always something happening in our house. You know, there's always some noise or the dog. <laughs> dog hears someone that on the lane and starts to oh, talk. So, um, so yes at least up here I can just ignore them um, which is which is quite useful but um, yeah. there's no heating so on a cold day it is a bit parky. But, is it nice um, to have both your daughters at home? I know one, one of them still lives at home but the other yeah. have her home. Yeah it is nice to have a home I mean she's she's getting to the point where um, the eldest one who she's she's been in for two weeks and they are starting to get a little bit restless and they just want to go out and sure. you know, it is tricky, but you know, they're just going to have to get used to it like everybody else really, you know? Yeah. Something we can do is there's lockdown. Mm. Mm, that's right. Yeah. 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 But you know, it's good. It's good training, isn't it? It's good. Um, it, you, you do le learn skills. You learn things about yourself, even in difficult in sort of times like this. So I must, I'm going to start learning Spanish again, I think. Um, I must start doing some Spanish because it's a perfect opportunity um, just to get an app and start doing that. And I've done a bit of exercise and online wow, couple of online brilliant. classes. Yeah. So I need to do that as well, because otherwise you are not moving. That's you it. Know. Yeah. Especially when you're writing all day. And then just like I sometimes mm. I've, I've had a few days last week where I literally was at my desk writing all day. And then I kind of transferred from there to the to the couch to watch yeah. TV. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. You look at I mean, I've got a, tra a fitness tracker. You look at your the number of steps at the end of the day and you think, oh, I haven't even had a thousand steps. I know. Literally shameful, not me. But uh, I've managed to do some um, some Zoom yoga classes. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, which was great. And um, and some 
luckily, well, um, I don't know if it was a premonition or something, but just before um, the, this all happened, um, I, decided, I decided that I was going to go couch to 5K. Oh, and, yeah. Um, because I've got asthma and the weather's with cold air, I can't do it outside. So um, I got a treadmill delivered. So <laughs> I've been doing that. Working, running on the treadmill. To, oh, that's to good. Do my couch to 5K, mm. yeah, oh, so. that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to be looking for it. It's going to make us really appreciate it. Um, other things, I think, next year, isn't it? Once we can go back out again, we're going to appreciate all the things that, you know, um, we've, we've sort of take for granted normally. I mean, just like nipping out. I mean, I'm just going to pop out, pop into the post office. And now you think, well, I don't go to the post office because it's not essential. I've got this parcel to go back and, you know, just just mm. be able to nip out when you want to. It does make you realise um, how lucky we are normally that we can just do what we want whenever we want. Yeah, just go where we like, you know, just go yeah. for a, a walk to the beach or um, go to a shop or if you fancy going to the cinema, you just, you, you know, mm. as you say, you just take all these things for granted. Mm. So, and I you're... Thought, you're on the coast, aren't you? Where yes, you... yeah. I live near Whitstable, and um, um, so yeah, the beach is um, is not far um, at all. So, can you drive? Yeah. Uh, can you walk, or do you have to drive? Um, I could walk. Yeah, I could. I could walk to the beach, but um, and you think the beach would be quiet, but actually, <laughs> everyone's had the same idea. Yeah. We'll, go to, mm. we'll go to the beach. It will be you know quiet and um, mm. not many people around. But uh, yeah, so we tried a couple of times recently, but there were just groups of people everywhere. Really? Um, yeah. Oh dear, that's yeah. not not no, good. But, not good. Yeah. So. Well, we're just taking it in turns to take Pearl out for walks. Poor little dog. Aww. She's absolutely shattered. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, my two Labradors, they um, they, they, they can't believe their luck. All yeah. these walks they're getting every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. It's like everybody wants to walk the dog. And Pearl's like, no, not again. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> So. Well, the thing is, my two, they get, I think um, they kind of instinctively know they adapt to a new timetable. So now they're kind of sort of coming up, up and, you know, sort of like, come on then, it's time for the walk. Can I, yeah. My concern is that when everything goes back to normal, they're going to be expecting three, four walks a day. Yeah. yeah so no, they're going to be in yeah. for a shock. But, well, I think um, Pearl will be just glad that she can have a oh. rest. So, How old um, is she yeah. now? Is she? Um, she'll be nine in September. Oh, so she's an old, an older lady. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, they supposedly live till about fourteen cockapoos, so oh. she's not that elderly. Oh, nice. um, so. but she's got a bit of arthritis in her hip, so she's oh. she, she doesn't really like too many walks. Yeah. <laughs> bless her. Oh, bless her. So I know you're writing something new at the moment, but um, tell us a little bit about a postcard from Italy. I've got your last book here. Um, came out yeah it came out in july oh there it is oh yeah. look i'm on the front yes you're lovely quote. And wonderfully romantic kathy bramley yeah there you go yeah so um this was a little bit of a different departure for you wasn't it this book it was yes yeah although it does open in tyndaldale the fictional village that i created for my previous four books um so and i kind of liked that sort of um you know, staying with tyndaldale but then going somewhere completely different which was wonderful to write about i've never written a book set in another country so it was really exciting and um and so, um, yeah, so we had the best of both worlds. So we had the traditional Tyndaldale and um, and then the main character goes off to Italy to to um, unravel the, the mystery. And um, and I like that as well, that there was the um, the modern day story and then the unraveling of the the the, yeah, the historical story um, mm. that's set in in World War Two. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Best of both worlds. Mm. It was great to read about. So how did you do, did you have to do much research into World War II for that book? Um, I did do, yeah, I did do quite a bit of research. I wanted to make sure all the details were correct. Um, and I also did lots of research um, of, of Italy. And um, so I got, I got, because um, I went to um, Italy, um, uh, Santa Margherita and Portofino, which is where um, a lot of the scenes are set. And yeah. um 
and, and that was a long time ago and I can remember it clearly and um because I always thought I'd love to write a book set here is this beautiful um location and um, so I got out all of my uh, old holiday photos from that time and sort of had them on the wall in my office yeah. and um and then I watched lots of YouTube films and um and there's a there's a, a scene in the book where the main character Grace and um and the guy that she's teamed up with Ellis um, they take, um, uh, they go by taxi along the coast from Santa Margarita all the way to Portofino, and it's a, a coastal route. And um, and so I I watched that whole route on YouTube so that I could just make sure that everything was accurate, and and it was just wonderful. Mm. Just took me straight back to when I yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did, hope I, I had to. to sorry, yeah, carry on. I, I hope hope I've managed to. Um, you know, recreate that scene for for readers so that when they're reading it they can mm. kind of visualize it for themselves mm. i had a scene a couple of chapters actually of one of my books the lemon tree cafe was set in sorrento um oh. so i i went and did the research i had to do my research in january even though the book was set in the summer in the summer months mm -hmm. and um I thought, well, never mind, because it's always going to be warm in Italy. It'll be wonderful. But when I got there, it snowed. And all, oh, the, children, no. <laughs> all the children oh, were okay. out in the streets because the children had never seen snow before. That, that's absolutely typical, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> such a shame. <laughs> I know, but it was beautiful. I mean, it, was, oh. it did snow a bit, but I still had some clear skies, but it was freezing cold, but, but really beautiful. But it just helped because um, I didn't really know Italy at all, but it just helped to bring those scenes to life and... Uh, I took lots of photos and when I got back I was able to incorporate quite a bit of that into it but it's nice isn't it when you can do a bit of research into mm. the place where the book's set yeah so it is yeah so um and this book I believe has been translated into uh lots of other languages it has yes yeah it's going to be published and I think we're up to 12 countries now wow. congratulations I can't, I can't remember exactly that's amazing. So you're, um, for people that uh, don't know how this works, um, obviously we, we write our books in English and they're published in countries where English is their um, main language. Um, but then you can sell the rights to that book to foreign publishers who then translate it into their home language. So by 12 countries, what you mean is a postcard from Italy will be translated into 12 languages and, and sold around the world. But that's yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's actually um, coming out in Germany on in a few weeks' time. I think April sixteenth. Oh wow! It will be available in paperback and ebook and audio as well. I think. Oh wow! And that's that's, the, that's the first, um, and which is quite quick actually for yeah. foreign publication because um, my agent who does the well the foreign rights department at my a agent's office. Um, they um, obviously do the deals with the foreign publishers. And, um, and the Germany deal was done, um, I think, about four or five months ago. And so that's sort of that's that really, quick. really quick. It's yeah. Really, really, yeah, really quick. Yeah. Um, because often it can take quite a long time. Um, mm. For example, with um, my first book, Cupcakes at Carrington's, um, that came out in 2013 in the UK. And we um, rights were sold to Indonesia, and that I think was published in Indonesia in twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Mm. Um, so that sort of took quite a while, but mm. um, it's always wonderful when um, mm. books are published in other countries. And I yeah. love um, um, when um, foreign readers contact me, and um, especially uh, I get lo lots of messages from. Um, um, the girls in Indonesia when they're reading the Carrington's books and they're oh, and, you know, often send, send me a picture uh, of them with the book, which is just lovely. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's lovely to think. I mean, I've got, um, my books are translated into German at the moment and I've just signed a deal for two books for Sweden. Um, but it is lovely to think that other people around the world are being introduced to your books in a different language, the ones we yeah. wrote it in. It's incredible, isn't it? I think it it's, is I think incredible. It's and it's, 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 I feel really flattered and honoured that people around the world mm -hmm. are reading my books. Yeah. Which just... Yeah. Yeah, it is great. It's, it's really exciting. Lovely. It's really exciting. So you're yeah. in the throes of writing a new book now. So are I you am. managing to get much writing done at the moment? Um, I am now. Um, I have to say, I, I was really struggling last week mm -hmm. and um, very, find it very hard to focus. And 
um, there was that kind of sort of like a little like glimpse of anxiety sort of in the, my peripheral vision, which was, yeah. sort of made it hard to concentrate on the writing. Um, and and I was quite hard on myself. I normally set myself a daily target of 2000 words and I was really, really not achieving that at all. And so then I was feeling guilty. So I took the pressure off and lowered that to 500, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which um, I was managing to, to do most days. Yeah. Um, I think that's the thing, you know, we're all having to readjust, aren't we? Um, our own expectations and as well for our kids, you know, because they're they're suffering just as much disruption and, um, you know, anxiety as us. And I think all this schoolwork that's coming out, it's a bit mean, really. When you just, <laughs> they just need a little bit of time to adjust to the fact that they're spending yeah. all this time with their parents. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. But I'm, I mean, I'm glad you've got your mojo back anyway. I'm, yeah, I'm, I have. Uh, and I'm just finding it's just, it's just keeping in a routine and, yeah. um, you know, doing something each day. And yeah. um, we found that, you know, we, as a family, um, trying to stick to some kind of routine has really helped all of us yeah yeah great and, um, yeah. well I wish you all the best with the new book and I can't wait to hear more about it thank you yeah well thanks so much for joining me Alex um we just close this one down I'll need to hide that and okay. I'll say goodbye for now and I look forward to seeing you soon in real life yes I look forward to it take care okay, thanks for joining me bye bye Oh, lovely to speak to Alex there. And how lovely to be by the sea, lucky thing. Um, thanks so much for joining me. And do come back and uh, see some of my other chats with authors. I'm doing them every day at the moment. So keep watching. Thanks very much. Bye.